Well, here we are with Victoria Pendleton. We're somewhere in London in a studio. You've just been having a photo shoot, Victoria, again. But what's this one about? Basically, I've done a few shots through cycling, through the ages. So I've had a Victorian outfit on and I've also had an 80s outfit on um, to help promote the new advert that's coming up from EDF Energy for Green Britain Day, um, which is about basically innovation and sport through the ages to do with the Olympics. So um, this is kind of in relation to that. Excellent. And have you enjoyed yourself? Yeah, it's been really fun. I enjoy dressing up. I especially enjoyed the Victorian outfit. Um, obviously, getting to wear something like that was a very rare opportunity, so it was really good fun. So, are we in downtime at the moment? I last saw you a few weeks ago, didn't I, in Holland in, at the World Championships. Is this downtime for Victoria? Yeah, I've had a small break, but I'm back in training now. I'm just working on my foundation training for the year. So I'm in the gym and on the road, basically getting, getting general fitness and building some strength ready um, for the training season to kick off probably, probably June. We'll be back into full-time training on the track. This time, for the first time, you've got a shot at three yeah. different events. Something that you really, really, really wanted to do and you didn't get that chance in, in Beijing at the Olympics, even though you've had them in, in World yeah. Cycling Championships in the past. So. How do you feel now? You've got a shot at three different events, um, which is great, but obviously triples the workload. Mm, no, it's, um, it doesn't really change the workload in terms of the training. I think the training is pretty much the same for all three events. And, and there are events that I do at the World Championships anyway. So, you know, for three quarters of the year, you, you're working for those three anyway. And then the last bit towards the Olympics, you just kind of specified just one out of the three. So I think it's nice to have more opportunities and the fact that also one of the events is a team event, which is something I've never done before really that seriously. And I think it's nice to, to do a team event. It brings a different element of training with somebody and together in an event rather it always being individual sport. So I think that's a, a really exciting element and I think we've got a good chance in it as well. So I think it's a great thing for, for women sprinting in general. I think you've got an excellent chance. I mean, you've got some <laughs> amazingly young talent. Yeah. Um, and, and you, not that you're not young, Victoria, but you know what I mean? You're, you're, you're sort of now misexperienced, aren't you? He's digging himself a hole yeah. here. Um, uh, you're, you're, you're the queen of the track and there's a couple of young princesses coming oh, up. Oh, what is all this? <laughs> um, yeah, no, Jess Varnish is hugely talented and she focused purely on being that first rider in the team sprint and she's made massive, massive gains over the last 12 months. Uh, she, couldn't, she couldn't really ask any more of herself and she's still improving rapidly, so... We're about even at the moment, like it's a fraction of a second between us and the best in the world right now and I really think that we've got the capacity um, to really move our performance forward and, and get faster so, um, you know, Jess is doing a fantastic job. But there's also Becky James coming through who also has shown a lot of talent, she's junior world champion, um, she did fantastic world in, in the World Cups this year and really, and also the Commonwealth Games obviously up against that initiative, a, a really great job and really took a ride off her, which is something she should be really proud of. And then, not forgetting, there's Sinead's Reed as well. So there's three girls in that race for, mm. for, for, for Woman One. And Sinead's obviously has got the experience of, of doing that. And I think if it wasn't for all the, the injury and the, um, all the other medical issues in terms of having an operation to fix her wrist and stuff, she would have had, a, you know, more of a shot at the Worlds last year, but I think it just wasn't, it wasn't the right time for her, but she's still very much interested in being on the track, so everyone's pushing each other forward, and I think... It's and that's so, what you want, yeah, isn't exactly. it? Yeah, exactly. I think it, that's what you need, that, comp that competition within the team to really spur people on to get the best out of themselves. So we're in a really lucky scenario, and I can't imagine there's many other countries in the world who are anywhere near a chance who have got that sort of depth of talent available for mm. the event, so I think we're very fortunate. And you mentioned Anna Mears, of course, and, and Anna Mears had the temerity to beat you in the in the individual sprint. That's the first time in, what, 80 years that you've, you've lost an individual sprint. Now, you never want to lose, do you? But it doesn't half do wonders for the old motivation and drive, doesn't it? Well, yeah, and you're holding a bit back as well, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, well, I wasn't in my best form, and... Um... You know, I've ha I had a few injury issues throughout the year and I tried to make the most of what I had and I think I did a really good job. Considering I knew I wasn't in great form, I still came, you know... Took a ride off her, didn't you? Exactly. And anyone to, to take a ride off her and no one else in the competition did. But she's been trying for 10 years, so it's about time she, she actually achieved one. Um, she'll actually be able to wear the world stripes on her jersey now, which she's been doing with, uh, you know, anyway, regardless, against the rules for some time now. So it's taken her 10 years to get it, so well done her. It doesn't mean I've given up. No.
No, but my point, you know, I mean, behind a good sports person, there has to be the odd defeat. You need, you need a few defeats, don't Everyone you? Everyone says this to me, and I think it's complete rubbish. Really? Like, you've got to get a monkey <laughs> off your back, you've got to lose something. And people of the team have said it to me, but I think it's complete rubbish. You know, you either have the form on the day or you don't, and I knew I didn't. Um, so I did the best I can, could with the, the form I had and the condition I was in, and I think I did a good job. It wasn't mm. as if... Everyone's treating it like a complete disaster because I wasn't world champion for the sixth year in the row or whatever. But come on, let's be realistic. You don't ask anything else of other athletes to that to that level. You know, I don't know why in sports like track cycling you expect everyone to win everything. It's not that easy being best in the world, and I think people do forget that. <laughs> it's quite hard. Have you been to the velodrome in the Olympic Park? I have. In there, I was there at the opening of the velodrome. It's okay. a fantastic venue. Um, what's nice is its location because it's right in the heart of the village, which is something we've never experienced as track cycling before mm -hmm. you know usually the velodrome is somewhere a short drive away you know 40 minutes away in uh, in Beijing so it's really nice to be involved with that you know to be right there in the same location as everything else it kind of makes you feel quite quite proud are the games a long way off or are they in no, your in your terms five now. five minutes away yeah they're uh, they're they're imminent now it feels imminent I mean the training is gonna go so quickly I mean you break your training down into like six week or 12 week blocks and the time's gone like that, so it's gonna be it's gonna be really tough. Okay, well listen, nice to see you again. <laughs> Best of luck with the training. Thank you. And we'll see you soon. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.